morning, afternoon, night. This is We Are Not Prepared, and we are your hosts, Byron and Mark Ivy. Well, welcome to uh, We Are Not Prepared, and we are so unprepared today that Mark is not even here. This is Byron Jackson, your host. I don't know what the heck happened to Mark. He is blind. I'm not blind, but I don't see him now. And so, but he he brought guests, so I'm happy to I'm happy the guest is here. So, okay, Marilyn. Very good, Byron. Good job. Thank you. Marilyn is, uh, she's quite a, a lot to handle here. She may be grounded before the end of this conversation. Hang on. And hang on. And Amy? Yes, Amy. Amy. So what is your last name? My last name is Olson, Marilyn Olson. Marilyn Olson. Where did you grow up at? I was born here in Oklahoma City, right down at uh, St. Anthony's. And uh, didn't go far, but uh, I'm, I'm really deep and rich, just like good, good soil. Now, what kind of work did you work, you know, in your younger years or? I'm still working and I, yes, I worked. Um, we lived on the farm, family farm where I was raised. And then uh, after college, I've worked in uh, education and healthcare, and more recently in the aging field with uh, retirement centers, assisted living and so forth. Now, what kind of, what did you raise on your farm? Um, everything to survive. I mean, we had, you know, fruit and nut trees and we had gardens and chickens and, and cows, but mostly wheat was the, was the produce for living. This has nothing to do with this show, but that's what we're not prepared. But I, um, am very interested in capturing the stories of farmers and ranchers, um, and their life stories, because I think that we're losing we're losing that part of our population because farmers are not wanting to go into farming because they can't make a living doing it. And so. Exactly right. And you learn a lot on the farm. Yes. Uh, it, uh, you know, on the farm, you're always glad when you have a new child because that's more help. Work, yeah. And it's also good for the child because they feel needed. And uh, in much of society, that would be a good thing. So my, my theory is everybody really needs a farm or to kind of operate in that mindset. You know why? I, I, for me, what, what I think that we've lost leaving agricultural is that our bodies were much more integrated mm -hmm. working a farm. Like, you know, you work your, everything was tied together, the spirit, the mind, right. the body, and right. now we have separate play. We have a place we go to to work, a place we go to to play, a exercise, a place we go to for God, and so. And then we wonder why we have such division in our in right. Our in world. fact, it's the full circle of life. So yeah. a child on the farm would see life and death pretty much every year, yeah. and uh, then it's a part of living, and it's not as threatening and and so forth. So that's why. We really um, feel like that the circle of life is really what Villages OKC, the organization that I represent, is trying to do is to bring all of that to a new awareness, uh, even interge intergenerationally. So Very impressive. Thank you. Well, Amy, follow that up. What is your last name? My last name is Sharola. Sharola. Amy Sharola. Yes. Okay. Do my Sharola. <laughs> So that's funny that you know that. Yes, that is. In college, I met my husband and they played that over the intercom and they were like, Andy, here's your song. And so now we kind of call it our song. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I am totally out of that. I didn't really? know you that. Really? You don't yet. know that song? No. Oh. I'm going to have to. I can't believe I'm left behind. But wow. I'm going to get caught Well, up. you were on the farm, so it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was on the farm. I wish I would have grown up on the farm. but <laughs> No. So where'd you grow up? So I grew up here, too, as well. Oklahoma City. But I'm a city girl who really wishes to be a country girl. Do you? So where where you? Which hospital? So she oh, was goodness. A, I think I was born at Deaconess Hospital. So you're Deaconess. Yes. So the Catholics versus the, what is Deaconess? I don't even know. 
It's something else now. Right. It was owned by Integris now, but it was it started as, I think, Free Methodist. So Methodist, yeah, Methodist I guess so. versus the, uh, the Catholic. Catholics. Yeah. And so... Grew up here, uh, went to Putnam City West for high school, didn't go far for college, Southern Nazarene University. I did marry a Colorado boy, and we moved up to Colorado for a while. What part of Colorado? Colorado Springs. Okay. But we've ended up back here, and then we're raising our kids here, so much to his chagrin. He he misses Colorado. Oh, immensely. See, I grew up in Denver and Oh, I, you did. I do not miss it. You at don't all. miss the mount I do miss the mountain view every single day. That was I the traffic. Yeah. It's a, when I was grew up there it was much smaller town. Mm-hmm. And so it is massive today. Yeah, it's yes. just too much for me. Yeah. Yes. Every to go to the bathroom, you have to get on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> but you can look at the mountains while you do it. <laughs> As I go to the bathroom. There they go. Which is funny because our house, when I grew up, our apartment we lived in, the bathroom window opened to the view of the mountain. Oh, see? That's, that's But you'd glorious. have to stand in the bathtub to see that. Oh, bathroom. okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so tell me the name of your organization. We both work with a nonprofit, local nonprofit called Villages OKC. And the reason for the name Village with an S, Villages OKC, is that we represent all the communities that are around greater Oklahoma City. So Mustang, Yukon, El Reno, uh, certainly Oklahoma City, Bethany, War Acres, Edmond, Guthrie, Choctaw. So that this whole metropolitan area that makes up the marketplace. Okay, Marilyn, uh, what is your mission? Our mission is to connect people with resources, each other and resources, local resources, to age with vitality and purpose. So we empower the person, we empower adults to age with vitality and purpose. Thank you. And so what is, what is your job there, Amy? I am the Director of Finance and Administration. So I'm the executor. We call her Lash LaRue. She whips everybody into shape. And she says we don't have enough money to. That's exactly wow. what she says. Wow, you are correct. I say we can't do that, Marilyn. Go raise a hundred thousand more dollars, <laughs> and then come back to <laughs> me. So before we leave today, Byron, I'll be shaking you down. Uh, believe me, I I shake with the best of them. So. <laughs> I may shake you down. Okay. That's so. Uh, It'll be a double shakedown. And now, how long have, what is your job there, Marilyn? I'm the executive director. You are. Now, how long have you been executive director? The organization has been in existence. We're now beginning our sixth year. Um, and so I've been a part of it since its inception. Good. We um, are connected with other villages across the nation, but uh, this is a separate 501c, and each of those are, are separate, just like cities are separate, but you know, they meet together to share ideas and so forth. That's the way we do. So across the nation for the last 22 years has been this whole um, grassroots effort called the Villages Movement, which is adults over 50, 50 and older, 50 to age, whatever, 120. I think there were four centenarians reported this month and, uh, you know, that celebrated birthdays. So this thing called aging is taking on a new um, uh, life, and new new purpose just because there's so many of us. In the metropolitan area right now, there's 370,000 people who are trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do now that I know who I really am? What what I, What is my new purpose? And uh, then it's a lot of questions to answer for. Uh, we well, I think it's kind of like um, going to from high school to college. You have to make all kinds of new decisions when you get to become an adult. You have to decide, okay, you know, what about money and food and transportation and insurance and all the questions that an an adult at 18, now we have to look at it again from a new perspective when I'm 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Okay. So stick with me on this. So what am I, my, I just come up with things because I have a lot of free time. Anyway, uh, one of my things that I've started doing is looking at my wrinkles as actually kind of like battle scars of things that I have overcome. Because if you don't get wrinkles, you're dead. And if you do get wrinkles, it means that you have survived something. 
and you've overcome something. So my exactly. my question to you, tell me something you've overcome. Well, I continued to learn to do new things. And so each of those is a, a something, you know, really a challenge, which is really what you're talking about. So like I said, I've been in education and I've had to you know, learn how to manage a physician's clinic. I mean, that was new. So I've overcome um, um, the challenges that come with managing people um, rather than just directing them, you know, teaching them and so forth. Uh, and those issues really continue on throughout life. So that that's one example. See, uh, mine, mine, if you don't, if you mind me sharing. Share away. Okay. So just, so one is um, prostate cancer. So overcoming uh, prostate. Also, like I've been married like four times. So I really have a lot of it experience with marriage, drug addiction. Um, those are just a few of the small ones. Well, I admire that. Uh, I haven't faced those specifically, but uh, some of the things that have really challenged me certainly have been, you know, raising children and all those things throughout life, but more recently caring for older folks. Yeah. And that has taught me a lot, which is part of the reason that villages emerged was because we did know a few things and we wanted to be able to share that with other people. And we found there's a lot of people like that who, who uh, have, they know a few things that just don't know everything. And so we're putting together groups of people that, that share that information. So by the way, if you're looking for a wife number five, we can help you. No, <laughs> I've actually been with not wife number four for 31 years. So, wow. so we've been together a long time. and So maybe uh, she's uh, shaped you up a little bit, huh? She has shaped. <laughs> she, uh, if you talked to her, she would actually say that. So <laughs> so if we ask her her challenge, it would be Byron? Me. It would be me. <laughs> now, I, I, so one of the things, the possibilities that we have is we have an energy worker. And so she, her and her group of people pay a lot of attention to energy. And so I tell you, I thought she was like, woo, 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 too much when we, when we first met and she came in here and her and her gang came in and they walked through all the offices and they go, the energy here is really good. And so I go, well, that's fine. It is amazing. Every person that comes to our office almost says, it really feels nice here. And so so I have learned to pay attention to people's energy. I want to say, Marilyn, your energy is off the chart. <laughs> it is great. And so that's why I'm trying to get a picture of, uh, I know that there's you, the executive director of your organization, but you as a person, there's some stuff that's happening there that's pretty magical. And um, so I just want people to be able to feel that. Do you agree with I me? Would, I would agree with that 100%. Magical is a great word. I mean, just, well, she doesn't take props I can as tell. well <laughs> as she should. Yeah. <laughs> She's very good at giving props to yes. others, but she doesn't receive as she should. Probably, yeah, she's humble. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's interesting about you, Marilyn, is you you uh, project yourself in a way that is ageless. I, I think that. that is a real compliment, and honestly, I believe that's a possibility for everybody. Yeah, I, and our 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 organization at least gives people uh, an option for that. And so we kind of keep teeing it up. It's, you know, and in the process, we just have a lot of fun. Um, now, what do you do? Like, in like, if I come to you, what, what do you do? Like, do I just come in and. Our, our, you help me a little bit here, Amy, but we have um, a grassroots organization. So um, a gentleman who joined us, said, well, I know what seniors want. And of course he was one, so he, you know, just like all of us. And he said, I know seniors want to travel. So I think seniors want to travel to Paladura Canyon on a day trip, see the 
outdoor musical of Texas and, um, uh, and then ride back on a nice bus. And so our job was to say, that's a great idea. You lead it. So you put it together. We'll help get the word out. We'll let people know. We'll kind of, we'll be the kind of the back office for all that. It happened. And uh, because he knew all, I mean, he'd done it before, you know. So so doing things um, that people initiate, because being creative is a great way to stay alive and purposeful. And, uh, but you don't have to do every piece of it. You know, he needed some secretarial support, you know, what our office provides. So we do a lot of life with each other uh, in a community, not, not a, um, uh, it's a virtual community. It's not a, help, help me. It's a, it's not a place. We're so a we, plan, we, not a place yeah. is so, what we say. So uh, we, we work hard to um, encourage people to be all that they can be at whatever stage they are. So my most favorite example was the um, quadriplegic that I signed up for a short time. And uh, she was totally helpless, but she wasn't at all because she was totally in charge. And motivational speaking was just in, in, her, in her bones. So until her passing to heaven, she um, impacted everyone just because of who she was, her real spirit. And so that's, that's really what we're about is helping people decide if they want to, you know, be a part of something that is uh, really alive and breathing. Then that's your mission is very similar to possibilities. That's exactly uh, what I think. Mm-hmm. Ours is uh, somebody comes in and they have a spark, and we um, say yes, and so then they they create, uh, and so we've had people that have created businesses. Um, one person sits on the school board. Um, I mean, so uh, we just really help people to say yes and try and uh, help them to grow in terms of their own, how they see themselves and their ability to relate to other people. One of the biggest pieces that we do, I would say for sure, is um, we just this year we're hosting many events that help people learn, continue to learn. Because so many people think they're done learning when they get done from college or when they're done with their job. But the scientific evidence proves you live longer as you keep learning. So we have um, we have lectures on the brain. We have lectures on the gut. On February 21st, we have what we're calling Listen to Your Gut. And we have two health professionals coming to talk about gut health. So we're providing um, people with opportunities to continue to learn about who they are and how to live a healthy life long life. Now, how did you, how did you get interested in working with? Cause you're. Oh, cause I'm, I'm younger. You're younger <laughs> than. Well, than, we want to be sustainable. So we obviously have to be training, you know, other, other decades of folks. No, 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 I did not ask you this question. Please, you just sit over there for a minute. Okay. I, could, I could tell you just need a little bit of help. It, <laughs> it is an interesting story. <laughs> it's an interesting story. Well, the past few years, one of the challenges I've had to overcome is a lot of loss. I've had a parent die. I had a grandmother who I was very close to pass away and I've had a sister pass away. And so actually in the time that my grandmother was passing away, Marilyn and I reconnected and she helped walk me through the process of being with my grandmother those last two weeks of her life. I had the honor of being her caregiver for those last two weeks. And Marilyn really, she helped me, um, get hospice in. She helped me know what was normal, what was not normal. So she she was like a cheerleader. So that reconnected us. Then she um, asked me a few months later to come help her with this nonprofit because I had some computer skills. And she said, can you just come teach us some of, you know, like the Google network? You know, you can use the cloud, all of those things. And so um, I said, okay, I will. So I came for a little bit and helped And then she was like, well, we're needing a little more help. Would you be willing to work a few more days? And I'm like, well, I have a lot of things I want to do and I can't really commit, but I'll come in and help you for a little bit. Well, that was almost three years ago, March. I'm all in. So good. (laughs) Yeah. So that is, that has turned into. You have great energy too. Well, thank you. (laughs) You know, we have uh, two of the people that have went through our program are deaf doulas. And so those are people to help families 
through the transition of someone dying or getting close to dying. Mm. And so it's a lot about learning to talk about the subject of death. And uh, I we have a 100% chance of dying. Everyone. That's, I, that's what <laughs> I know. And so for me, I actually, the more I talk about it, the more acceptance I have because it helps me to live today much better. Yeah. And so, so it's interesting. You guys should get together with the deaf too. They're really very fascinating, but they actually just go around and get people because pe they run into a lot of people like you who is having someone dying. And so the hard part is the support for the family in terms of talking about stuff and getting it. Right. Well, and even just watching the process, there are so many, and I don't know that it's wrong to shield, you know, children from things of death because they don't want them, you know, some parents don't want their kids to feel sadness, but it is a part of life. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've been yeah. shielded too much yeah, of so. this natural process. And it's actually beautiful. Now, when I did at first, when I realized this was in the middle of COVID that I was going to be the only one caring for my grandmother, I was scared to death. I was like, I've never done this before. I don't know how to do this. But by the end, I was just like, I'm just so thankful. I, I had that time. I got to watch her go peacefully and the way she wanted. And what a gift. Yeah, yeah. And it was what she wanted, which is part of all of this is to know what you want. Yeah. And then to express that to others. And so we at Villages talk a lot about the, the, um, the time between or the preparation, the timeline prior to prior to death and then backing all the way up so that, so that every day is a gift and it's good. Yeah. And, and we make the most of it. You know, we, we, we have work to do here and we want to live with purpose and, and excitement. And uh, we, we nurture all that in whatever way the person is interested in. So now do people pay? We have a membership fee okay. for, for being a member. Uh, our events have a lot of guests because um, we're still in the new phase. We're in, Year, we're starting year six of a 10 year plan to really change the culture of Oklahoma City as regarding aging to really embrace it. And uh, so we're we're halfway there. Uh, so they pay for a membership. And sometimes if they're not a member, they pay for a particular event. How much is membership? Two fifty a year or twenty dollars and eighty three cents a month. Not bad at all. Four coffees. Yeah. Four coffees. Not yeah. bad at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, it, I would join. You yeah. should join, Byron. I have an application with me. We'll do that. Thank You'd be you. a great asset. You think so? Yes. So with the doulas, I want to know which podcast that was. I'm going to listen to them. Well, why don't I give you their number? I will give you their podcast, but they actually, you should talk to them. Although yeah. one of them's in Thailand right now. But. Well, actually, that's a great example of what we do is we connect those dots because there's so many wonderful resources like New View. Yeah. But if people don't know that New View exists, it doesn't do any good. And so we're connecting all the good guys, all the good people, all the good organizations, all the good um, businesses who are willing to help educate people and then let them choose what's best for them. That's really so what we do. I saw this. Stick with me on this. And I'll come back soon. So I saw <laughs> this show on um, Netflix called The Black Godfather. And so I, I watched this. And so it's about it's a true documentary on this guy who you never heard of him, but he actually brings people together and connects people. And so, uh, and he's like very influential. Like he brought Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson together. Mm -hmm. And so that was before Thriller. And so he put them together and they created Thriller and the whole so that whole thing was this, he brought those people together. Yeah. So they had all these politicians and stuff that says, we don't do stuff without checking with him. And so they show these big board meetings. And then there's this little bitty black guy sitting there. <laughs> that's just there at the meetings, but his thing, he didn't get paid a lot. He just brought people together. And so I just think that you're, your mission of that, you know, just trying to connect people. Is, we are we are a bit of a matchmaker. Yeah. Not really forcing, but just helping tee it helping. up if it's a good thing. And um, we... To see if the energy fits. Exactly, exactly. And uh, when people 
find what really connects with them, it, it takes on its own life, you know? It does. It does. It's the, it's the organic, it's, if we go back to the farm, it is the organic growth that happens. And uh, it is so interesting with funders because they go, well, how do you know if you put these people together, what's going to happen? And I constantly have to go, we don't know, <laughs> but we know that people create magic. But it's organic, and you can't say, you can't, like, you don't know when a seed's going to sprout. You just know if you do certain things right. It might. It might sprout up. And mm -hmm. so, um, well, very exciting stuff. It's, uh, you guys have signed me up for <laughs> 20, 22, 23 a month. You're going to be our black godfather. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be village's black godfather. I'm the village black godfather. <laughs> I will tell you that meetings will be hard for it, but I want to support you in any way that I can because. Uh, well, getting the word out is key well, for people to know that it's viable and it's an option. The can great you leave thing some is you, brochures here? Because sure. we have a lot of. Santiago knows a lot of people, and so we could just leave them with him and yeah. slip him a little something. And For sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons we partnered with New View and, and others like Metro Tech and the YMCA. We're now, we have a, an agreement with them because we're all on the same mission, and as long as we look to um, working together so that it benefits everybody, we're, I mean, there's no problem. You know, we're just figuring this out because the world needs to be connected. Yes, when is. they do, then it, all good things happen, and we yeah. don't have to control it or anything. So at all levels, yeah. if people understood that, yeah. the world would change. Yeah. It's a, mm -hmm. it is my my sermon that I give to no one really, <laughs> if I could. Well, you ladies have been uh, fabulous to have on the show. And Thanks so, for having us. Thank you very much. It's I been will a great conversation. This Byron, I mean, I've uh, I'm signed up, and I my wife will say, "Why are you spending some more money?" And uh, so I'll say, "It's for uh, my aging." That's I am I am older than my because wife. you need to age with vitality and purpose. She will love that. I do have a lot of you know that I DJ, and so I am I not think, surprised. I am the oldest like DJ in the history of that I know, but. So, but I, so I have to stay up with like current. Will you please put uh, my Sharola in your next rotation? I do. I play <laughs> that quite a bit, actually, except that I found out that it's like dirty. Is it? Yes. You should. Oh, no. It, uh, listen to us because I do like middle school stuff. Yes. And you always have some teacher come up and go, do you know that's inappropriate? Oh, no. And I go, My Sharona? And he goes, yes. And so then I listen and go, oh, okay. Now Only play the My Sharona <laughs> part. <laughs> <laughs> Sharona part. <laughs> so I do say, I so I dance and uh, I do a lot of stuff. That's a way to stay that's, that's active really, and aging. That's really exciting. Well, I, it's been fun meeting you. I had no idea we were in such a treat. So Well, oh, it's been great for me and... I did. I actually have this thing I do where I go to restaurants, a couple, because I have friends that are like cacao oh, restaurant. Right one. And so I will do uh, what I call 30-second dance-off. And so I go in <laughs> and I stop the restaurant and they have to just dance for 30 seconds. And I put on some music. I take in a speaker. And we blast for 30 seconds. All of the patrons. So you're asking everyone there who's Everybody eating. that's there. And then I say, you know, you can go back to your life, but let's just stop and celebrate for a minute. And we dance for 30 seconds and then we stop. And then, and so. That's amazing. So they'll call me up and they'll go, hey, you need to come in and dance. And so. That's terrific. We've got well, to plug him yeah, in. Yeah, I agree. We need to have some dance offs. We need a little a break at uh, Positive Aging. Oh, yeah. Um, that'd February be fun. 21st, so. That would be uh -oh. fun. <laughs> <laughs> We're already assigning you a job, Byron. They're assigning me a job. <laughs> Marilyn, Amy, thank you very much. This has been, you guys could say goodbye or something if you like. <laughs> well, I've had a great time. So it's been, been a real pleasure and a real honor. And uh, I want to come back. You will come back. One time, maybe we'll bring Mark in with us. Maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll let him come. My blind compadre. <laughs> so, Amy, Marilyn, thank you. 
The rest of you have a great, great day. This is Byron without Mark. We are not prepared. We're out. As we wrap up, Possibilities would like to give a special thank you to this episode's sponsor, the Merrick Foundation, paving the way for creative expression in our community. Their commitment to our vision allows us to continue to have these conversations. We are grateful for your continued support, the Merrick Foundation.